Hey, what's up, guys? It's Apollo Ochia here, back with another part of what if Naruto was in a political marriage. Before continuing this story, I would like you guys to leave a like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't, and like the content of this channel. We're almost at 900. We have crossed 888 subscribers, and by the end of this month, I want to cross 1,000 subscribers. I would really appreciate it if you do so. And without further ado, let's continue our story. The next morning, <sighs> Pooh yawned cutely. She was still in Naruto's embrace, who was sleeping soundly next to her. She hadn't woken up feeling this complete in a very long time. She knew that there was someone in this world who liked her and would do his best to make sure that they would always stay together. She had convicted herself to the cause of protecting and staying with him as well. Who noticed that there was something hard pressing against her lower back? Did he bring a kunai with him to the sleeping bag? After thinking about when he could have brought a kunai with him to bed and why he would do that, realization, realization dawned upon her. There was no kunai pressing against her back. Quietly deciding not to freak out, she slowly unzipped the sleeping bag, making great effort not to wake him up or face the consequences of extremely awkward morning dialogue. After she had the bag unzipped enough, she slowly unwrapped his arm from around her waist and slowly got up, really slowly. She didn't know how heavy sleeper he was, so she decided not to push her luck. Fu stood up in the air and stretched her tired limbs. She couldn't look. She was incapable of looking. If she looked, she would be considered a pervert. By who? No one, because there was really only two people there at the time and one was sleeping, leaving her only the one person awake. But it's gross. How is it gross? It's a reproductive organ that used to create life. It's not gross. But it's violating his privacy. What privacy? She's married to him. She was bound to find out what it looked like sooner or later, she conceded to one of the voices of reasons in her mind. She looked, without her to cuddle on, he hadn't fallen on his back, exposing his front-facing body to all the world. What interested her eyes the most would be the penis point that was hanging out of the boxer slot. It was the first penis that she had ever seen, and it was semi-erect too. How it fell out of the slot was a mystery to her. Back at the academy, the teachers had shown diagrams and medical pictures for sex education, but this was the first real penis that she had ever seen in her entire life. She started she stayed at it for a longer a lot longer than she should have. Wait, his penis was hanging out of his boxer slot, and he spread eagle alone in the sleeping bag, which had been unzipped. If he woke at this point, he would have made assumptions, assumptions that Fu would have no way of disapproving. She walked near him secretly and close to the offending appendage, just to tuck it in. That's all she had to do. That's all she had to do to avoid the awkward situation between them if he woke up and his dick was hanging out of his underwear. Mentally preparing herself, she reached over and pinched the top of his boxers and lifted them up. After that, she brought her other hand and pinched the head of the penis intended to tuck it into the slot and be done with the situation. And she would have done just that if he hadn't ground halfway through. Well, it wasn't a ground, more like a moan. This freaked Fu out to the point where she almost lost all motor control, which would have been very bad to his future or theoretically producing offspring. Luckily, she caught herself before she could do that and finished tucking his member into his boxers. She stood up and walked over to the pond to wash her hands off. Right before she could do that, a voice rang off inside her head. It was the voice of curiosity. She brought the hand that touched his penis up to her nose and gave an experimental sniff. It smelled musky and made Fu head go light for a second. Fu immediately withdrew her hand from her nose, submerged it into the water and scrubbed it furiously. Pheromones. There had also been a day spent on different airborne toxins 
and how to avoid them in combat. Pheromones had been just a subcategory, so she did not know the exact science, but she knew that pheromones were either passed through physical contact or airborne particles and increased the interaction between two people. What she didn't know was that the production and potency of pheromones were influenced by the amount of confidence and lack of fear that one felt, which is why it is often said that women are attracted to men with confidence. Naruto was overconfident in spades and was practically fearless, not mentioning the supernatural. Although she wasn't a slave to her body and hormones and didn't feel attraction to him that way, she had just taken in a lot of extreme potent pheromones directly from a male sex organ. Naruto started to get a who made a point of not looking at him after she heard him stretch out a bit. She heard him scrambling to get his pants on, which he had tossed aside the night before, and left in the opposite direction of where she was. The sound of him urinating from afar hit her eardrums. Once he was done, he made his way to Fu. What's for breakfast? he asked. She didn't answer and couldn't move her head to look at him in the eyes, which had a lot which had a little to do with the major blush she was sporting. Naruto didn't take the silence as a good sign and sat down beside her at the edge of the pond. Look, if you are still self-conscious about what happened yesterday, that's okay. I'll still be here by your side no matter what you do to me. Although he meant it as a comforting gesture to show how she was no longer alone in this world, perhaps he shouldn't have phrased it that way because it caused Fu to reach maximum blush. We all know what happened when someone reached maximum blush. Pulling a classic Hinata, she fainted into the pond. Naruto reacted quickly and pulled her out of the body of what pulled her body out of the water as fast as he could. The water was cold, and by the time he had her out of the water, she was wet and shivered, shivering. Naruto groaned. Does this happen? Does this happen with every chick in the world? He asked to himself. He meant females getting soaked in their clothes and making him push down all his pervert senses to unclothe them without looking. Deciding to use some of his t-shirts to dry her off, he looked away and undressed her. She only had a claps on white top and zip up skirt as major clothing. So getting her all out of her wet clothes had been easy. But he also got some of his other clothes set out and redressed her in those. As he didn't know where any of her spare set of clothes were and he didn't want another Yujito situation. Once she was dried off and in some fresh clothes, he put her back into the sleeping bag for warmth. While she was out like a light, there would be no training with her at the moment or point. It was wasteful. Naruto walked well away from her sleeping body and took out his sword to practice his kenjutsu katas. After about 5 minutes or so of kenjutsu exercise, he tentatively sent out a mental hello. Ever since he he saw Fu mentally speaking to Chaomi, he decided that he wanted to try that as well with the Kyubi. But he didn't get any sort of response. Hello, he said a bit more assertively in his head. Still not receiving a response, he mentally cried out, Hello! Naruto decided that hearing demonic grumbling from his head is a really weird feeling. What the fuck do you want? Kurama went through great lengths of signifying its displeasure at being mentally screamed at by punctuating, punctuating each word individually. Why didn't you say that we can talk mentally? Will all this talk mentally? Kurama grumbled, preluding to the fact that talking in the mindscape is considered mentally communicating. Okay, why didn't you say that we can talk without me having to enter my mindscape? Why would I ever want to talk anyone on, and more or less like someone like you? So you can socialize, huh? Naruto said cheekily. Kurama grumbled out again. It was in a grumbling mood at that point. 
What do you want, kid? It asked once again. Don't you want to hear about my escapade since I talked to you at the Valley of End? Not particularly. And thus he began regaling all the interactions and events that took place since his and Sasuke's fight. It might not have been the most wanted of things by Kurama, but Kurama was going to get the brute to open up, damn it. Chom is a female now. How does that work? It shouldn't have any sexual organs. She doesn't have any sexual organs. Who said that? Since she's in a glass jar seal, Chomi can feel anything that Fu feels. So she just started to feel like a girl, I guess. But still, she been she's been asexual in gender orientation since she was born hundreds of years ago. How do how do you say that she's up and suddenly decided that she's a female now? The QB paused for a second. Whatever. I honestly couldn't give a two shits about that. So you do at least give one shit, Naruto thought out in an accusing tone. Rama made a noise that signifies frustration. Congratulations, fuckwit. You verbally outmaneuvered a being of chakra that hasn't talked to anyone extensively for hundreds of years. You want a pat on your back? A fucking cookie? Someone's in a bad mood. I am being of malice. A being of pure hatred. I do not talk when I do not need to. Get a point across. I am in I am not in a bad mood. I am a bad mood. I hate you. No, I loathe you. You say that you will get stronger for your precious people, but in the end you always come crawling back to me for my power. Like that Sasuke kid that you always ramble on endlessly about. You think that you can protect anyone? Guess what, kid? People fucking die. They die for other people. They die for stupid reasons. And they die for you. What are you going to do when one of your precious people decided that their lives are worthless than yours? Naruto was silent for a little bit. He laid down his katana and squatted into the lotus position, preparing to enter Mindscape. As he walked up to the cage that held the Kyuubi at bay, he noticed that the Kyuubi was sitting instead of squatting or laying down like it normally did. Who died? Naruto asked quietly. What did you say? The voice of Kyuubi boomed out far louder than it did while in his head. Someone close to you died. Who was it? Who the fuck do you think? My dad, my creator, the sage of six parts. The Kyuubi paused to collect its thoughts then continued. Want to know the thing that I hate most about you? It's not the fact that you walk around and smile like a dumbass. Even though you feel such utter contempt to people around you. It's not the fact your dad sealed me into you for reasons that I can't be held accountable for. It's not even the fact that you are the most annoying thing that ha has ever become known to me. No, it's your nativity. You think that you will rise above hatred, extinguish it, protect the people that you love and uphold the bonds between other peoples, but you can't. No one can. Eventually someone is going to do something that you will hate them for doing. And you'll come to me for power to destroy them. Eventually the people that you love are going to die. Eventually you are going to make bonds with other people that they, they will only wish to cut. But you continue to believe that you'll, that you'll always be better than that. Well guess what? I've talked to you, hatred, your true self. He tells me what you really think, and I like him so much more than you because he knows that you fail to reach the conclusion that you hope for. Deep down, you know that you're naive, but you don't do anything to try to change it. Naruto stood in silence with his head lowered to the ground. Then he rose his head up high and stared at his face of hatred with the utter conviction present in his eyes. You know what, Mr. Being of pure hatred? Someday I'm going to get rid of your get rid of all that nasty hate bottled up inside of you and I know that what will stand in your place will become more beautiful than anything that has existed in this world. Saying that, saying what he darly needed to say to Kurama, he quickly exited Mindscape, allowing for Kurama to sink back down into a sleeping position. Stupid brat. When he barely opened his eyes up, Fu was already conscious at doing stretches. He woke up, quick. 
Naruto said, interrupting her movements. She looked back with a sheepish expression on her face. Uh, yeah, I guess. Did you undress me? Who asked, knowing that she fainted while in her clothes and woke up while in his. It didn't take much saluting skills to figure that one out. Naruto blushed slightly and threw up his hands. Yes, but don't worry. I didn't look. I I'm not a pervert, I swear. Who had seen him lie before? He definitely didn't act like that when he lied. Knowing that when she was naked that Naruto refused to look at her nude form made her feel bad for looking at him while he was indecent. I knew that I shouldn't have looked, but if I didn't look, Naruto would have woken up with his penis hanging out of his boxer and he might have made conclusions, or he might not have. He could have just assumed that it slipped out like it really did. With that information, that Naruto wouldn't do anything even remotely perverted to her even when she was knocked out and naked made her feel simultaneously good and bad. Good that she didn't have to keep her guard up all the times. Bad that she took advantage of him while he was knocked out and indecent. Do you, do you have any other set of clothes? I couldn't find any, Naruto asked. She snapped out of her rev reverie. Er, uh, no. Bad day and laundry day are at the same day. This shocked Naruto, but what if they got ruined? They're really durable. They survived an explosion even when my skin got blasted off. She said this with a confident smile, which really freaked Naruto out, mostly since she mentioned how she practically got flared and didn't even bat an eye. She began to walk over to her clothes to hang them up to dry on a tree. So what's for breakfast? Naruto asked his original question. Wanna cook up some rabbits for us? She said distractedly. Naruto knew how to follow simple instru instructions on a book to cook a chicken or boil some noodles, but he didn't know how to cook meat without a stove or instructions. Whenever he was on a mission away, he mostly ate prepared packet rations and let his team cook the meat whenever the rations ran out. Well, Fu seemed to have a lot of food that was reserved or preserved. If he failed, then he could just try again. The fire was little more than smoldering embers, so he put some wood on it and waited for the flames to fan. After that, he skewered some rabbits and set them just touching the flames. Having seen what his teammates do, he tried to emulate that. By the time that Fu was finally done with her morning routine, which consisted of doing her stretches, brushing her teeth, and vocal exercises, Naruto had managed to burn several rabbits and was close cooking two of the la latest ones two of the latest ones at the same time noticing her waking up to him and the pile of burnt rabbits before she could say anything he said i know it looks bad but i have a good feeling about these she giggled and sat down you can't just instantly cook many rabbits you have to be patient with them she gestured to the pile of burnt rabbits by his side i got that I got that figured out, he said humorously. She raised her arms up, just making sure. They say that way for a few minutes. They said that way for a few moments. Watching the meat cook, Fook occasionally remarked on when to move or flip the rabbits. So what happened today? Naruto asked. Fu sat in thought for a while. Well, I thought that we could do some more survival training, Naruto blanched. But now that I think that you're practicing swordsmanship, I know that we absolutely have to spar with those. We should also head into the village for another sleeping bag for you at some point. After that, maybe some more tired so. Naruto picked up the rabbits and were, that were cooked off perfectly, sound perfect. He handed one to Fu and took the bite out the other that he was holding. Who was good with swords, this wasn't a swordsmanship that was born out of rigorous practicing of different katas. This was a swordsmanship born from experience, or at least sparring with a man who learned from experience, her sensei. This was also the fact that she was using water sword. Usually the water sword was only used to catch the enemy off guard, extended the length of a kunai's effectiveness 
or to allow to always hold on to a sword without actually having a sword. It wasn't as sharp but it still was extremely lethal and if the user was skilled enough it could be extended slightly mid use. Naruto's education with Kenjutsu so far steamed from drilling with the sword, different slashes, blockings and pairing for about a week. He also sparred with Omoe, Karui and Samoe at regular intervals and was getting good at using the kata movements in actual combat. Wisdom before knowledge was being demonstrated in the sparring sessions that they were having. Although Naruto sometimes was able to see the opening in her guard and went to attack, he more often than not received a small cut somewhere on his body for his troubles. Other than that, he spent the rest of the spar pairing and blocking her strikes. Also because she learned how to attack mostly from experience. She wasn't very predictable in her movements. The spar ended with a cut up Naruto and a heavily breathing foe. His cuts were already healing due to Kyuubi's chakra. The reason for his strong healing rate happened because Minato's used a seal that would continually leak minutes amounts of chakras of Kyuubi into the chakra system of Naruto, giving a significant boost in healing. Unlike Fu or Yijito, which was why they still were still they why they still were still visibly scared. Whereas the stamina came from him being an Uzumaki, who were said to have such an unbalanced chakra system in that they had a huge amount of physical chakra, that they lived significantly longer than most, and were given energy in spades. For only a week of training, you're really good. Fu complimented, still breathing hard. Thanks, Fu, Naruto said distractedly, still holding on to a largest cut on his arm, which was in the process of being closed. After he was sure that all the cuts were sufficiently done, he went over to the pound, stripped to the underwear, and jumped into the clean water to clear off blood off his body. Deciding that he had the right idea, Fu stripped off the claws that Naruto gave her and jumped in with him, wearing only her mesh up tops and bottom. Her splash caught him in the face and mouth, temporarily blinding him. After splattering all the water from his mouth with and wiping his eyes, he looked at Fu and promptly looked away again. Fu, why did you jump in here too? I barely touched you. Well, I got really sweaty and the water looked really refreshing, so I jumped in too, she said simply. Okay, but the mesh top and bottom were woven closely enough that there was no important bits showing through. But it did you but it but it did hug her body in a way that attracted Naruto's gaze downwards. Noticing his gaze, she covered her already covered chest with her arms and huffed. I thought that you weren't a perv, she accused and turned to the side. To Naruto's credit, there's a big difference between consciously preparing beforehand and choosing not to look, and being caught off guard and looking subconsciously. He immediately looked at her eye and started splurting out apologies. After she decided that she was amused enough, she said, It's fine, let's just get cleaned up and head to Taki for a sleeping bag. Naruto just nodded and turned around to rub himself down a blood. Fu did the same but only with sweat. After she felt like she was clean enough, she lazily floated up on the surface of the water and closed her eyes in relaxation. Once Naruto did the same with his own body's cleanliness, he emulated Fu's movements and floating on the surface as well. After a moment of silence, he announced, I like this. Fu didn't open her eyes but still responded. What do you like? I I just like this, I guess. I mean this situation. Being married against your will to people that you don't know? She responded playfully. Well, there is that, but still, if we weren't married, we wouldn't have met. I wouldn't be able to train around the continents with some of the best teachers there are. I wouldn't have nearly as many precious people as I do now. She floated around in silence for a bit. Hmm, I like this too. She gave out a sing singular huff at laughter. I actually like this a lot. She raised herself from her floating session and Naruto followed suit. She looked to the side and blushed slightly. Look, 
I don't know if you were told but when we get older we might have to you know have kids not obliged as well ah yeah I guess well I know that things change all the time and people have to cope with changes but I always wanted to be friends with you no matter what happens between us she said in a shaky voice shebuki had told her about the possibilities of the production of a child happening in the future and while she didn't have a good grasp of friendship actually happening to her she had read enough books to know that when major things happen between friends they often times get go their separate ways or at least stop liking each other despite no how friendly happy or collected she appeared at times on the outside she was actually really scared nervous wreck on the inside she was a person who was constantly doubting herself and was always seeking self validation due to her insecurities who was subject to many insecurities taking pleasure in causing others pain confused and frustrated her to the no end she didn't know what the future held for her and that was terrifying for her who was scared that she wasn't worth much like shinobi when compared to likes of yujito and to top it all off she recently went through an extremely visible physical deformity naruto was able to sense all the insecurities that animated from her sentence he swung up to her and placed a hand on her shoulder she still looked away from him she put a hand on her chin and forced her head to the to his direction i don't really know about any of that stuff but i know that i always wanted to be friends with you fu at least she was able to place one thing on her anti insecurity list or just security list down naruto she looked at him and smiled as wide as she could naruto blushed and swung to the edge of the pond to get ready for their trapsy into the taki come on we should probably get going to get the sleeping bag yeah let's go fu nodded and swung over as well link break in the village hidden in the waterfalls the sound of vigorous slurping was being heard from a ramen restaurant that was situated among the residential district the cause of this was due to the two jinchurikis situated there eating food as rapidly as they could i love ramen so much naruto said in between his slurps i know right fu said in between her slurps as well They had been on the way to a store that sold survival and camping gear when Naruto had been distracted by a large neon sign that bespoke of wondrous ramen within the, its walls. They had been there for a little over 15 minutes constantly in a state of waiting. The hamely noodles that was situated inside the chef that had served them could almost never meet their gaze. And whenever he did there was a look of not confusion more like indecision or conflict within his eyes who wasn't used to being looked at looked at like that but she didn't mind as so long as she was actually served it apparently appeared that being subjugated to a marriage that promised no more war for the village for as long as the treaty lasted at the very least caught her the privileges to eat some good restaurant food Kumo didn't have any ramen stands that were any good so Naruto went without for his entire stay at ramen at Kumo This was his first ramen oriented outing for several weeks and he was enjoying it There was already a growing stack of ramen bowls in between the two as the two furiously consumed bowls after bowls of food There were few words traded between them as they ate and they were completely out of it so they didn't hear when the door rang out signifying new customers Fu is that you Fu swung her head to meet voice as quickly as she could there were still noodles hanging out of her mouth so she just splattered the ground with the fine broth she was looking at the non descript average looking brown haired teenage girl and a non descript teenage boy wearing glasses they both looked around the same age as who as long as soon as she laid eyes on both her orange eyes dulled in enthusiasm and she adopted a sullen look in expression they ran they ran up to her and sat down beside them at the booth so naruto was hanging out at the end 
with both of them focused on Fu. Both of the two average looking teenagers seemed ecstatic at the prospect of talking to Fu. We haven't seen you in ages, the girl said with exuberance. Where have you been all this time? The woods. Fu said in a clipped response. What have you been up to? The boy asked, training. Well, have you been doing anything interesting lately? Both of them were acting like they were lifelong friends with, with long, like, long like friends with her. But her demeanor around them spoke otherwise. Got married. Congratulations, the boy said in jovialty. The two unknown started laughing good naturally at his joke. Norder decided to join in the conversation. Hello, he said tentatively. Both of their eyes lit up in recognition. You must be the guy, the male said. You're Naruto's monkey, right? You saved Aki from this joining. Thank you so much, by the way, the girl said with a grand smile on her face. Naruto smiled back and scratched the back of his head. Don't worry about it. I do stuff like that all the time, he boasted. All four of them sat in awkward silence until Fu sighed and decided to introduce them to each other. Naruto, this is Takana, she gestured to the girl, and Fujitsu, she gestured to the boy. They both greeted him amiably. Naruto, Takana, and Fujitsu talked together about various things for a while, with Fu sitting awkwardly in the middle. Naruto tried to bring Fu into the conversation, but she didn't seem to try, which made it really difficult for him from the discussion. He was able to get that Takana, Fu, and Fujito were all were in the academy together and that they were about to be teammates together until their parents had them forcefully removed from the team, leaving Fu by herself with her sensei. After it looked like she had enough of the conversation, she abruptly sat up from her chair and walked straight out of the restaurant. Not expecting this to happen, he quickly fished his wallet out of his pocket and paid for both of their means with the laughter, leftover Kumo, ca- Kumo cash, after apologizing to both of them, he ran after her, just in time to see her disappear in a pool of water that led to the cave that the waterfall was behind. Quickly dashing to it, he dived in after her. The currents were strong and Naruto didn't have to do much in terms of actually swimming, but from the blur of red chakra that was just out of his blurred version he could tell the catching he could tell that he was catching up to her once he was safely out of the water tunnel he ran after her out of the waterfall and into the forest Naruto lost sight of her the moment she hit the tree line and would have gotten hopelessly lost looking for their campsite if not for the trail of broken branches that spoke of a very irritated Fu flying away on branch level. After some more t- running, he finally met the end of the broken branches and walked trepidously further, only to be temporarily blinded by something that was out of his vision and defended by a resounding explosion that was produced by the thing that blinded him. There was a terrible wailing that resounded throughout the clearing. It wasn't a sad wail, it was a mad wail, a scream of pain, agony, and ag- anguish and unspeakable hatred. Who breathed out some more light reflecting dust and ignited it, destroying a defenseless tree to kindling. She screamed out again. Naruto took in the clearing that she was destroying. It held scars as signs that the destruction that it was suffering had happened more than once before. But what scared Naruto the most was Fu herself, or what little of herself was left. She was embarrassed by a vicious scarlet shroud that hugged her body tightly. There were four wings sprouting from her distended back along with a thin tail that hung off from her tailbone. Fu didn't have any facial features other than her whitened out eyes and mouth. Fu! Naruto screamed out in concern. The being stopped suddenly and slowly turned its gaze towards Naruto. Instead of the trees that were being destroyed, he didn't feel like he was looking at Fu anymore. So he slowly unseated his sword in preparation for the fight that he felt was about to take place. When she attacked, he didn't even have the time to react. Using her wings as powerful engines that were capable of achieving huge velocities at the drop of dim, 
She slammed into Naruto before he could ever raise his sword to block her. He was rammed into a tree which splintered in on impact. She squeezed painfully onto his body and he could see stars begin to swim in his eyes before the whiplash and lack of oxygen reaching his brain. Gasping for air, he began to fiercely struggle against her, but to no avail. Her hatred was far stronger than her fear, not letting go for even a second. He was pinned to a tree with limited oxygen. Naruto just didn't feel healthy in the slightest. There was pain in his torso that could only mean a broken bone or several broken bones. He was delirious and frankly, at that point, quite surprisingly su surprised that he wasn't still not dead. He looked down on her shrouded form. She was still hugging him painfully. To the tree, other, other than that, she hadn't moved in the slightest. Foo! He whispered out before his conscience conscious left him. He woke up with a depowered Fu screaming over his broken body. The sound resonated painfully in his eardrums and rever reverberated throughout the entire forest. Why? Why do they have to put up fake fucking smiles? She sometimes lost her ability to speak as her body unconsciously froze her filific to intake minimal amount air. She was screaming in anger as well as sadness. It was like she was screaming as loudly as she could while still somehow crying at the same time. I ha I fucking hate those fucks. Noto was still out of it. He didn't know what was going on or why Fu was screaming and crying. And he most certainly didn't know how or why Fu went beast mode over him. He tried to raise a hand out to her but the pain was too much and he failed midway through. This at least was capable of gaining Fu's attention again before he succumbed to unconscious once more. This time when he woke up they were both at the main campsite with Fu quietly poking at the fire and him resting in the sleeping bag. He tried to talk but found his throat too dry to continue. The croaking that he did make allowed to Fu to notice his consciousness and she hastily got some drinkable water once she came back and hand fed Naruto water. He finally sat up while in extremely amount of pain. Letting him rise himself, she backed off and allowed him to prop himself into a sitting position. The fire was the only source of light in the clearing as it was evening at the time. What was that about? He asked with severity. She flinched at his tone and looked away from the fi firelight. He was able to make out the faint outlines of tear trails on her face. I, I, I went to blow off some steam, but then you followed me and I couldn't control it like I could the other times and I blacked out. When I came to, I was holding you to the tree. You had a few broken ribs and your pulse was weak. I was just, I was just so angry. I am so angry. I'm always so angry. She was on the verge of tears again. After that I cried your after that I cried out and carried you back here so you could get better. It looks like the cubist chakra set your ribs back, but you still you still should shouldn't move around so much. Tear begins to stream out of her eyes like miniature waterfall. It was astonishing him how much water her big orange eyes could hold. Not to lean forward even though it pained him a lot to do so and put his hand on her knee to for support. She looked down at him expecting Naruto to look up at her with hate or disgust or fear or contempt but was met with a slightly pained eyes barely holding back tears of pain while he smiled as hard as he could even though it hurt him as he did it. Don't worry fool, it's okay, I'm not mad, he said in painful voice. She looked down at him with the most astonished face that she could conjure up. She stayed that way until she smiled too and started laughing and sobbing at the same time. Fu leaned forward onto him gently and carefully placed her arms around his back. Thanks. I'm I'm so sorry. You wouldn't even ever be able to comprehend how sorry I am. She whispered into his ear. Naruto laid back down onto the soft sleeping bag with Fu coming down with him as well. He laid down on her torso 
and they both reclined against a log that the sleeping bag was near to. After enjoying the moment of silence, he asked Fu, So, you want to tell me what happened? Naruto physically feels Fu core muscles tighten out of nervousness. He normally would have assured her that she didn't have to if she didn't want to, but he got the feeling that she needed to talk about this. Well, although the academy days throughout them and after that, they never really even acknowledged my existence. Nobody did. They were supposed to be my team members and when it was called out in the academy, they groaned and moaned and said that they didn't want to be on the same team. So uh, their parents got them out of my team and I became a team of one. Fu paused for a while. Then we got married and now they suddenly think that we're best friends. I hate them so much for that. They don't even have the guts to hate me. As soon as I become useful to the village and them, they open their arms up as wide as they can. I hate that. They only like me now because of the treaty. I kind of lost it when they talked to us, went out in the forest and uh, you know the rest. Not our son for a while. Fu, why do you fight? He asked. Suddenly, I fight for you, my best friend, she said without hesitation. Not a frown, but what if I die? Naruto asked remembering his conversation with Kyubi. I won't let you die, she said with the utmost conviction. But what if I die, Fu? I might die sometime. And you might be alone again. Fu didn't speak up. Need more people to protect than just me. I know that it's painful trying to forgive people that have hurt you before. Trust me, I do. But sometimes when they try to act nice again, even if it's just to get close to you, you have to try to be nice to them. I know for a fact that anyone who meets you would be glad to have you as their friend, no matter their original intentions. But if they hurt me again, she said, she said quietly, if I was afraid of never being hurt, I wouldn't go outside. Just like they are finally giving you a chance, you have to give them a chance too, or you'll never be, or you'll never not be alone. She was silent for a bit, then responded, I'll. A try. Naruto smiled and dreamily said, All you can do is try. But I know you'll be successful. After saying that, he closed his eye and fell asleep while laying on Fu's body. She smiled contentedly and moved them both into a position more considerable of Naruto's pained body, with her being that big spoon, of course. As this is where I'm going to leave this part of, guys. I know it's kind of boring in this one. And yeah, a little bit of lemon, but that's what the writer wrote, not me. Uh, this is Apollo Chiha, and I'm signing out. Peace.